today I'm bringing you the second book in the Forget Tomorrow trilogy. It, this one is Remember Yesterday and it's by Pinchip Dunn. And I have to say that this book has completely blown my mind. I mean, it's been an amazing ride. And I have been through some hardships these days. Here it's why I look like a panda. And uh, I have to say that this book has managed to provide me with an escape. It has uh, managed to entertain me and made me think about other things, you know, travel with Jessa and Tanner and everyone. And all for that, I have to say that I'm very grateful to this book. But also, I remember Pinti telling me that I should read the second and the third book because those two, uh, these two are one of her favorites. And I remember, I remember I was reading this one, I was enjoying it, but I was thinking, now, I still love the first one better, best, and the thing is, um, when you end this one, I mean, it's amazing because the pin tip was planting seeds on the beginning and in the middle of the book, and then everything comes together so beautifully in the end, it all makes sense, it all ties together, and that's amazing. Because in this book, we are going to have uh, more presence about um, time traveling, about how changing things in the past can affect the future and the results of all this, you know, meddling. And to see it all come together in the way it does, it's it, amazing. I mean, amazing. Um, if you haven't read the first one, stop seeing the review because I'm going to talk about things about Forget Tomorrow. So it can be a spoiler for you if you haven't read it. So what we are going to find in this book? Uh, in this book, we are going to have to, to... We are going to change our narrators. We are going to be following Jessa. Jessa is Kali's sister. Uh, it's been some years since Kali stabbed herself into the head with that syringe. And uh, Jessa had been thinking that maybe her sister had survived but she had to come to terms that her sister was not around and she has to now to be an adrenaline junkie she plays sports that are dangerous and she does things and maybe it's her way to feel alive because something is missing from her she's missing her twin she thinks she is the one that should have died and not her twin and as a character, she's an amazing character because she has this feeling on her that she's not as loved as her sister was. She feels that she's not as worthy as she was. And as I say, she feels like she should have been the one to die. And you heart for her because, you know, she's feeling this inadequacy inside, inside her, like she can't compare to Kali. And I love the evolution that she does from the beginning uh, towards the end, how she accepts everything and how she manages to, to grow before you rise. It's amazing. And also, uh, she's going to kind of team up with this guy called Tanner, who is a scientist. And she always was like, no, scientists, no, I hate you. Because, yeah, scientists are the ones guilty for discovering the memory thing and also for torturing her and for having people go to the underground and all of that. But there is this relationship between them. And I have to say that at the very beginning, I have to be honest, I wasn't feeling it because I didn't like Tanner as much as I like Logan. But as you keep on reading, you began to see that Tanner has lots of liars and that he comes as, you know, as brushy, as, as abrasive. But that's because he's protecting himself. And when he begins to trust and he begins to take away the liars and show you what's underneath, uh, you feel for him too. And also towards the end, all the things that happens in like the last 15, 50 pages or so, <laughs> it's, it's going to blow your mind. I mean, it's amazing. It's, yeah, it is. I'm not going to make any spoilers, okay? But it all comes together so beautifully, I mean, Wow, how did you do that, Pintip? I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, I'm gushing over this book because it's amazing. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm losing my... my, my. Um, 
yeah, it's because I love this book so much that I want to imprint on you that you need to read this trilogy because it's amazing. Well, the thing is that we are going to follow these two main characters and uh, Jessa discovers something that upends up, up her wall and it's that Kali is still alive. Yeah, I was very excited and I was very afraid because I was thinking, okay, now Pintip is going to kill her again and we are going to be hurting again and you know what I mean. And the thing is, Kali is alive, but she's in a coma. Uh, she suffers from something called asynchronicity. And her body is here in this timeline, but her mind is skipping through past, future, present, and different timelines. So she needs to find a way to anchor herself in the, in the, in the present time so she can come back. So we are going to have uh, Jessa and Tanner trying to do their best, sharing memories and whatnot to bring Kali back. And this book is very charged with feelings and with characters because, as I say, I love how Jessa is feeling due to the things that happened in the first book, that th those things had an impact on the person she is now. And also she, she kind of, of feels uprooted because, you know, she had to go on the run, her mother didn't come with her. So they have this very strange relationship. and. She feels like, as I say, she's an adrenaline junkie. Uh, she does things, uh, you know, to put herself into that place where adrenaline fills her body so she can feel alive. And uh, she's lost and you still can see that little chill then that she was when she got abducted and tortured and everything. And I love that she has Tanner and that they have this way of building a bridge that connect each other. and they get to see glimpses of what they are hiding inside and I love how they can save each other, how they can lend a hand to the other one and and that's amazing and I love all the secondary characters which I'm not going to say much about because I don't want to slip any spoiler but if you like the first one you're going to love the second one this second one as I said at the beginning it's more centered about um, altering the past, what what will happen if you move like a cheese piece in the past, what will happen in the present, or what will happen in the future. And it's more like, yeah, it's more charged because you can see more about how the inner workings of these um, organizations work. Yeah, I'm not making much sense, am I? <laughs> what I want to say is that, okay, we are going to experience more with the timeline and we are going to see more about the organizations that Dresden, the child woman, is uh, dealing with and also all the implications that future memory can have if it's implanted in, uh, in the present moment. And we are going also to be following these kinds of characters that really touch your soul because, as I say in the first book, about the first book, I love how real they are, how human they are. I love how they make mistakes, I love how they upbringing and the things that they live through affect who they are in the present because that's true, that's life, that happens. If you had a shitty chill hold, you come out in certain ways. If you are told that you are not worthy, whatever you do, it doesn't matter that you are trying your, heart, your hardest, if there is no one to appreciate what you are doing, it's like you feel isolated and you still keep on trying because you still want to impress those people because you know you were alone and you were in that mind frame and I love how much uh, Pintip is, uh, is able to construct upon this kind of you know of thinking of feelings I mean it's amazing how much these books uh, speak directly at least to me and I guess it will to you if you like books where the characters are not perfect are not heroes are just regular people put in hard situations and uh, these books are about hardships, about growing up, about taking decisions that maybe are wrong, maybe they were right, but just, you know, keep on trying to do the right thing. Even now, even with the information you have, maybe tomorrow you will have done things differently, but you have to deal with what you have today. And you have, you know, to, to remember yesterday, to remember that your past is what is making you, you, now, and that you keep on walking. And I love uh, how supportive Tanner is. I love all these moments in which he tells her one step at a time, one breath at a time. Even if you're just surviving, surviving, that's enough. 
And as someone who has a chronic illness and sometimes struggles with pain and things, this idea of just stop, breathe, you can do it, it has been amazing to me. I mean, uh, if you haven't read these books, I don't know what you are waiting for because she's an amazing writer. So thank you for watching. Bye.